Maybe um, Christina Pichelsi could, could tell us, is, is this question of what is real, what is not real, is it even, is it even um, relevant in your own practice, in your own reflection, on especially um, questions of health care and maybe end-of-life care? Does it, the reality of the experiences, it, does it even come into, into play in your own? It's, it's an interesting question. I think scientifically, um, yes and no, depends on the audience. In my own work with my patients, I'd say no, because the reality is very much, I think, what you were trying to say, Bruce, the reality is what's going on in that patient's life at that moment. You know, this week I, I saw a woman who had breast cancer. Um, she's been very busy with her work. She neglected to do follow-up. She's come back to me now with metastatic breast cancer. She's, she's dealing with very, very tough issues about, is she going to die from this? Did I do something wrong? You know, those types of questions that she's struggling with. If I, um, in, in what I do in the field, to be thinking about, well, how can I look at this reductionistically and how am I going to prove that, that means nothing to her, nor, quite frankly, to me in the midst of that relationship. But what does mean a lot, we often talk about um, in our work in spirituality and health, healing relationships and how patients can come to a sense of profound meaning and purpose. You talked about meaning, a profound meaning and understanding in the midst of their suffering in the context of that healing relationship with the care professionals. Well, how does that happen? Um, I think it would be fascinating to study that, to see what the reality of that situation is. I would challenge us to think, though, that as, as long as we're thinking in a reductionistic paradigm, we're not going to find an answer to that. I think we, we, have, to, we have to look a little broader at our studies and ask, what is the ultimate purpose of our study? So, for example, and I think, Andy, you did a great job of analyzing sort of the state of the art. When we're looking at the PET scans of people who have, let's say, are speaking in tongues and, and you see a difference, well, as you very well said, even if you hadn't seen a difference, it probably wouldn't stop what people are doing in their lives. So what are the kinds of studies that we need to do that's going to move this area forward both scientifically but also clinically? What's going to make a difference to our patients clinically? How much is understanding of consciousness going to help them? Well, it's going to help us all if we understand how consciousness can, can help us deal with illness or suffering and move us forward. Spiritual practices, do they in the end make us more compassionate? Does it make a difference on the world? I think those are the types of questions that we have to ask broadly about the research that we do.